Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Good morning, Pleasant Grove. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're rejoicing and we are glad in it. Welcome into virtual sanctuary on this morning as we lift up the name of the Lord on this MLK holiday weekend. Would you go to the throne with me? Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another day and another day's blessings. We thank you for the brand new mercies that we experienced this morning. Had it not been for you, we wouldn't be here. And so thank you for grace. Thank you for love. Thank you for mercy. And as we enter into worship, it is our desire to please you. It is our desire to honor you. And so we have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. May our praise and may our worship be a sweet-smelling savor to your nostrils because you deserve the honor and the praise. Now, God, there are those who, out, who are throughout the land who are listening on this day who have various needs. Some are in need of finances. Some are in need of healing. Some are in need of deliverance. Some are in need of peace. Some need their joy restored. And God, we cast every care upon you this morning because we know that you care for us. Now remove any hindrance, remove anything that would keep us from feeling your presence, from hearing your voice on this day. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just want to praise him. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all. Just want to praise you, yeah. Just want to praise you forever. Forever. And ever, yeah. And ever. Ever. And ever. For all you've done, yeah. You've done for me. Oh, blessings and blessings and glory. And honor. And honor. They all, yeah. They all Oh, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you forever, forever, and yeah. ever, ever and ever, and ever for all you've done, for all everything, you've done everything you've done, yeah. For me. Oh, blessings and blessings and glory. They all, yeah. And honor, they all, yeah. They all Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, blessing me. Oh, oh, I just want to thank, thank you forever. Forever. Yeah. Ever and ever. And ever. Oh, yeah. And ever. For everything. For all everything all you've done, yeah. For me. Blessings and glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. They all belong to you. Blessings and glory. Everything belongs to you. Everything, everything, everything. Blessings and glory. You deserve the glory. 
you deserve the honor. Everything, everything. You deserve the glory, yeah. You deserve the honor, yeah. Everything, 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 everything. Everything belongs to you. Gonna praise you, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, blessing me. Oh, blessing me. We welcome you on this day to worship. Uh, because of the weather, uh, we are not in person, but we are virtual, and we thank God that you have joined us either through Facebook, YouTube, through our website, or through our Zoom uh, worship celebration. Know that we are thankful for you, and our prayer for you this day is that God would meet you right where you are. Whatever you need, God has it. Wherever you are, God knows where you are, and he is there with you uh, to carry you along this journey. So welcome on this day. We also want to invite you this week to join us in our Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock by Zoom. Uh, you can join in by going to our website, the Bible study link, and click on uh, Bible study, uh, and you will come in into the Zoom Bible study. We also are now offering a Zoom uh, worship service on Sunday mornings. Uh, at 10 o'clock, you may obtain the dial-in information on our website calendar. Uh, go to www.pleasantgrovewindell.org, click on calendar, and the Zoom information will be there on Sunday morning. For those who uh, prefer to call in as opposed to uh, using the internet to come in. This is uh, Martin Luther King weekend. We honor the legacy, the memory, the work of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And I want to invite you on this weekend to share in the festivities that celebrate his life and his legacy. Uh, on tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you can join in the MLK virtual breakfast on WRAL uh, TV. Uh, Reverend Dr. Vesta or Bishop Vesta Murphy McKenzie is going to be the speaker. And then at 11 o'clock, there will be the 42nd annual Martin Luther King Memorial March in downtown Raleigh. The march uh, will begin uh, at 11 from the State Capitol Building in Raleigh, so you may join in the march. And then at 12 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, the 42nd annual MLK Noon Observance, uh, virtual uh, observance, will take place. The panel discussion will be beloved community here and now. And you may join in and watch this on the Triangle uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Facebook page and on the Triangle uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Committee YouTube page at noon. And then to close out the day at 5.30 p.m. on tomorrow, uh, the 42nd annual evening musical celebration will also be virtual and will also be on the same platforms. To obtain this calendar of events and other information, you may go to trianglemlk.com, trianglemlk.com. We want to continue to uh, request prayer for those who are uh, sick, for those who are recovering, for those who are on the healing list. Uh, Sister Christine Ross, the mother of uh, Lady Bell, we thank you for praying for her uh, as she continues to recover. We thank you for praying for Sister Connie Ray uh, as she is recovering, for Brother Lawrence Ray, who is the brother of uh, Trustee Dwayne Ray. Please keep him in prayer. We are praying for Brother James Williams, who is the son of Sister Lula Massenberg. We're praying for Pastor Ada Smith, who is the sister of uh, Sister Luella Broadnax. We are praying for Sister Priscilla Williams, who is the wife of Minister Melvin Williams. We also are lifting up this morning Sister Gertrude Mitchell, Sister Christine Jones, Sister Mary Frances Montague, who are all uh, in senior facilities uh, or are being cared for at home, and Brother Bobby Cooley, who is the husband of Sister Frances Cooley, who is also recovering from illness. As you go to God on this week, I want to encourage you to lift them up 
by name uh, each day. We do know that the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. We know that God is in the prayer answering business and as we go to him earnestly, uh, praying according to his will, whatsoever things we ask for in prayer, believing, is there a witness that God will answer prayer? Amen. He is a prayer answering God. And so this week we're joining together in prayer. As we continue in worship, I want to invite you to worship God in your giving uh, on this day. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can give. We thank you for partnering with us in ministry. Your gifts mean the world. Your gifts enable us to uh, not only experience inside worship, uh, and the word go forth through inside worship, but also to be a blessing to the community that we serve. Multiple ways to give, they are on the screen. Uh, you can text to give, you can send your gift in to the P.O. box. You may drop your gift off by um, the church office during the week due to the inclement weather. There's no one here this morning to receive your gifts, but you may drop them off by, uh, by the office during the course of this week. However you give, we're so thankful for your gift. Let me pray over your gift and over you as giver. Father God in heaven, in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you first for the giver, for that person, God, whose heart is a heart that generously wants to sow into your kingdom, the heart that understands that it is more blessed to give than to receive, the heart that recognizes that every good and perfect gift comes from you all that we have is as a result of that that you have given unto us that you have shared with us to be good stewards over and so god i thank you for the giver now lord we commit to you these gifts we pray that even as we receive them that your anointing would fall on them that just as you blessed two fish and five loaves to feed a multitude that you would bless these tithes, that you would bless these offerings to accomplish what you purpose in this place at this time. We thank you, we honor you, and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. about to experience a life changing moment you won't leave the same the same way you came Amen. he's in our very midst you will be healed delivered he's here to set you free and because God is here Anything can happen in here, in here, in here, in here, anything, anything can happen in here, in here, in here. You are about to experience a life-changing moment. You won't leave the same. The same way you came. Amen. He's in our very midst. You will be healed, delivered. He's here to set you free. And because God is here, anything can happen in here. In here. In here. In here. In here. Anything. In here, in here, this moment, this moment is designed for God to change your life. This moment, oh yes it is, for God to change your life. This moment. 
for God to change your life. The heavens are open. The portals are open. My spirit is open. For God to do anything. The heavens are open. The portals are open. The portals are open. My very spirit is open. For God to do anything. Oh, the heavens are open. The portals are open. My very spirit is open. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. For God to do anything. Whoa, the heavens are open. The portals are open. My very spirit is open. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, the heavens are open. The portals are open. Because anything can happen in here, in here, in here, in here, in here. Anything, anything can happen in here, in here, in here, in here. You see, something good is happening in here. Something good. Oh yes, it is. Oh yes, it is. Something good. It is. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. See, miracles are happening in here. Oh, go on and grab it. Go on and grab it. Go on and grab it. Miracles are happening in here. Oh, yes, it is. I don't know about you, but I feel it. I feel a breakthrough is happening in here. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Breakthrough is happening in here. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I feel the miracles are happening in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go on and grab it. Go on and grab it. Miracles right in here. Oh, yeah. Come on and feel it. A breakthrough is happening in here. I am just one praise from my breakthrough. I am, I, I am just one praise from my sing. You are, you are, you, you are just one praise from your. You are, you are, you are. One praise from your breakthrough because anything can happen in here, in here, in here, in here, anything, anything can happen in here, in here, in here, anything, anything can happen in here. We are continuing this morning our series in called Greater, entitled Greater. 2022 is the year of greater, uh, greater possibilities, greater faith, greater vision, greater discipleship. Uh, 2022, I believe, is the year that God has called us to close some chapters, chapters on limitations that have been placed by fear, limitations placed by indecision, 
uh, placed by uh, limitations, placed by unrighteous living and hopelessness, and then opening a new chapter. See, anything can happen when God is in the mix. He allows us to open new chapters, chapters of, chapters of endless possibilities, chapters of boundless faith, chapters of unconditional love, chapters of genu genuine and generous grace. A chapter of prevailing power by the Spirit of God who enables us to live out this walk. Anything can happen as we put our hand in his hand. This is the year of greater. Why don't you share that with the person who is with you there in your house, whether you're in the living room or the kitchen or, or wherever you are. Just say, this is the year of greater. God has greater for me this year. Uh, understand, saints, that you and I have been saved for greater. We have been empowered for greater. We have been equipped for greater, but we have also been established or planted for greater. And that's what I want us to talk about this morning, established for greater. Go over to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, beginning at verse 15. These words are recorded in the New International Version of the Bible. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I'll provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Father, bless your word now that as it goes forth, it will accomplish what you purpose in this hour. I decrease, invite you to increase in this place at this time for your glory. We are gathered for your glory, we worship. For your glory, we live. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Established for greater. Muhammad Ali continues to reign as one of the greatest boxers of all times. Uh, he is remembered as much for his out of the ring antics as he is for his in the ring destruction. He was a formidable obstacle, an obstacle to anyone who wanted to wear the belt of the champion. Uh, to sit on the boxing throne, you had to go through Muhammad Ali. And can I tell somebody that there will always be obstacles between your point of origin, your point of origination, and your point of destination, uh, between the start and the finish, between where you are and where you are called to be. And these obstacles arise from both within and without. Uh, they arise from within, from low self-esteem. They arise uh, from within, uh, from, from internal stubbornness. But they can also arise as a consequence of outward hateration. They can arise uh, as a consequence of outward uh, jealousy. Uh, they occasionally are the product of pride. But they also are sometimes placed by prejudice. Uh, there will always be obstacles between your point of origination, 
uh, your genesis, if you will, and your point of destination, your revelation. And that's why it's essential, my brothers and my sisters, that every believer have inspiration that will serve as motivation to deal with the obstacles that come in life. You have to have something that keeps you going. You have to have something that energizes you. You have to have something that encourages you. We all need something that we can hold on to. Uh, in this Old Testament text, Joseph gives his brothers an explanation for his inspiration. Uh, even though they had treated him wrong and had every expectation that he was going to exact some revenge against them, uh, Joseph was not motivated by a desire to get even. Uh, Joseph was not motivated by a desire for revenge. He says, listen, when you started this, uh, years ago I was 17. And when you started it, you had one thing in mind. Your goal was to take me out. Your goal was to nullify what God had promised me so that the dreams that he gave me would not come to pass. But when you sold me into slavery, you really didn't understand what you were doing. And more importantly, you didn't understand who you were doing it to. You didn't understand that God had established me. He had planted me where I was because he knew that he would get maximal glory out of my life. And so your opposition, brothers, was not to me. Your opposition was to the God who gave me the dream. My motivation was never tied to you. My motivation was always tied to the God who gave me the dream. And it was that God who took what you intended for evil and he caused it to result in my good. Uh, when, Joseph, when Joseph spoke these words to his brothers, the story had already been written. Uh, he was near the end of his life. And he has seen the greater that God had done in and through his life. Uh, every scene in his life pointed to the fact that God had established or planted him for something that was more than and beyond where he was at the time. He had already been the victim of disloyalty and false accusations that resulted in a miscarriage of justice. He had already been betrayed by his brothers and forgotten by those whom he helped. His story had already been written. His torn robe had already become a royal robe. He had already been elevated from the pit to the palace. His dysfunctional and divided family of his youth had grown together in his old age. God had indeed taken uh, evil and turned it around for good. But the question, the question that I have for you, Joseph, this morning is how did you make it through to get to greater? Uh, how did you get there? Your blood hated you. Uh, every time it seemed like you were prospering, you had a setback. Uh, your good name was slandered. Your reputation uh, was tarnished. You did time in prison. Yet, yet, you still came through smelling like a rose. How, how in the world did you make it through? You didn't have superpowers. Uh, you had the same daddy that your 11 brothers had, uh, the same mother that Benjamin had. Uh, you, you are not known for killing a lion or killing a bear with your bare hands. So I just want to know how you, Joseph, made it through so that you could get to the greater that God had for you, that God established uh, you for? Well, well, Bell, here it is. I'm glad that you asked because I'm happy to tell you. Let me tell you how I got to the greater. I first got to the greater because I developed permanent principles that shaped my perspective. I developed permanent principles that shaped uh, my perspective. There were some fundamental truths that were the foundation for my system of beliefs. I believed that I belonged to the Lord. 
and I believed that he was with me wherever I went. That meant that he was with me when I was in the pit, and he was with me when I was in the palace. It meant he was with me when I was in the presence of my enemies, and he was with me uh, in the presence of friends. He was with me in the feast, and he was with me in the famine. He was with me when I was walking, and he was with me when I was riding on the chariot. He was with me, uh, if you will, when Delta was the variant that was there, and he was with me when Omicron was the variant that, that was there. And because I was his, uh, somebody needs to recognize, because I was his, I had an obligation to wear his uniform, and I had an obligation to wear his image wherever I was. I had to wear honesty. Uh, I had to wear integrity. I had to wear loyalty. I had to wear faithfulness. And so when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce me, I could stand firm because the Lord was with me. Uh, when they threw me in the prison, I didn't lose hope because I knew that the Lord was with me. I had permanent principles that shaped my perspective. I didn't change what I believed based upon political expediency. I didn't change who I was based on popular opinion. And that's why I could always have confidence that God was with me because I was always with him. Somebody ought to shout right there. I was always with him. And can I tell Pleasant Grove that as long as you are with him, as long as you are abiding in him, as long as his word is abiding in you, as long as you are seeking him first and his righteousness, as long as you are standing on the foundation of biblical truth, uh, uh, obstacles will not be able to stop you. See, Christian principles say do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Christian principles say fight for what's right, even if you have to fight by yourself. Christian principles say fight for those who don't have basic resources uh, because they need somebody to join with them in the fight. Fight for those who are treated unjustly in the justice system because they need somebody who will join with them in the fight. You, 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 you got to fight. Christian principles say do everything everything, listen to me, for the glory of God. Christian principles say, forgive even as also you have been forgiven. Christian principles say, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. If you want to overcome obstacles in life and get to the greater, you have to develop some principles, some permanent principles that will shape your perspective. Uh, I developed I developed permanent principles that shaped my perspective. But not only that, but Bell, let me tell you, I was able to get through it because I was patient in my progress. I, I was patient in my uh, with my progress. I, I was 17 when God gave me a vision. Uh, I was young. I didn't know how God was going to elevate me. Uh, when my brothers put me in the pit, I didn't know how I was going to get out of the pit. When, when the Midianites bought me and, and bought me as a slave, I didn't know how I was going to be redeemed. Uh, when I was thrown into prison, I, I didn't know how long I was going to have to stay there. But in every instance, I knew that eventually I was going to have to come through it because of what God had shown me in a dream. Uh, there had to be a shifting of my condition so that it aligned with my position. Let me say it again. There had to be a shifting of my condition. I knew that I was going to come out of it because I was positioned in God and God had said that he has some things in store for me and so I simply learned how to be patient. And my advice to you this morning, Pleasant Grove, is that you learn how to be patient and understand that patience comes through tribulation. Listen, it 
it took 13 years for my condition and my position to come into alignment. It took 13 years for my vision to be manifested. It took 13 years for my setups and setbacks of disappointments and heartaches and heartbreaks to turn into my greater. But I was patient. I didn't get ahead of God. I didn't act out of frustration. I didn't act out of irritation. I was patient because I knew that God was up to something. See, when Potiphar made me the overseer of his house, I knew that God was up to something. When the prison warden put me in charge of the prison, I knew that God was up to something. When God used me to interpret Pharaoh's dream, I knew that God was up to something. Uh, why don't you, right where you are, tell the person who's next to you, God is up to something. Uh, he is up to something. You hit a dead end in 2021, but he allowed you to come into 2022 because God is up to something. That door that closed for you last year is a door that he's opening for you this year because God is up to something. You don't understand it. You, it's, it's miraculous in your eyes, but simply Simply be patient because God is up to something. Now, 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 I'm not saying, please don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that it's easy to be patient because there were times when I felt discouraged that there were times when I was misunderstood. There were times uh, when I wondered, why me? Why, why am I the one who is under attack? Why am I the one who's having to surrender my freedom? Why am I the one who's having to always take the high road? But I was able to be patient with my progress because I was the one, watch this, who had received the vision. Mm -hmm. My father and my brothers had not dreamed my dream. Uh, the Midianites had not dreamed my dream. Potiphar and the prison warden had not dreamed my dream. But because God had given me the dream, even when it seemed like progress was slow, I could wait patiently for my change to come. And can I encourage somebody this morning uh, to be patient with your progress? Uh, see, with God, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are as a day. God can clap his hands and bring instant deliverance. Uh, God can speak a word and bring instant change. Do not get caught up in how long it is taking for your progress to change. Do not get caught up and how long the process takes. Just trust God that in his time, he will bring every promise to pass. Why don't you type that in the chat box? He will bring every promise to pass in his time. Do not grow impatient. Do not be weary. Do not get tired in the process. Simply wait on the Lord because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I made it to greater because I developed permanent principles. I made it to greater because I was patient in my progress. But finally, I made it to patient. I made it to greater because I persevered through my pain. I persevered through my pain. Near the end of the 19th century, there was a heavyweight boxing champion named Gentleman Jim Corbett. He held the heavyweight belt title for five years, and he was one day asked about the key to his success. And he said, the key to my success was my determination to fight one more round. He said, when your feet are so tired that you actually have to get up from the seat and shuffle back to the middle of the ring, you have to fight one more round. 
He said, when your eyes, your eyes, your arms are so tired that you can hardly lift your hands to, to put them in a guarded position, you have to remember to fight just one more round. When your nose is bleeding, and your eyes are black and you're so tired that you simply wish that your opponent would crack your jaw and take you out of your misery and put you to sleep. You got to fight one more round. Remembering that the man who fights one more round never loses the match. Well, I stopped by to tell you that I made it through my life struggles because I was determined to fight one more round. A body blow separated me from my family. Family, but I had to fight one more round. An uppercut put me in the pit, but I had to fight one more round. A left hook landed me in prison, but I had to fight one more round. A right cross of seduction tried to score the knockout punch for me, but I had to fight one more round. And I need to tell somebody this morning that you have to persevere through the pain, and you have to fight uh, one more round. But here's the thing I need to tell you. You are not fighting this fight alone. You have a corner man. Somebody say corner man. You have a corner man who is in the ring with you, who is rubbing Vaseline on your face so that when the occasional punch uh, lands and connects with your head, it will simply slide off and do no lasting harm. You have a corner man who has an iron that's in the ice bucket so that when you start to swell up because you feel like life is unfair. He'll apply ice to that part so that in short order, you can get back to looking the way you're supposed to look. You have a corner man, a man who is there to identify the strategy that the opponent is using and try to encourage you to stay in the ring for one more round. See, your corner man is experienced because he stepped in the ring over 2,000 years ago go. He absorbed everything that the opponent threw at him. He absorbed, he absorbed the punches of being criticized and ostracized. He absorbed the punches of humiliation and degradation. He absorbed the pain of pursuing purpose without popularity. He absorbed the punches of betrayal and denial. And the enemy at one point knocked him down and the referee came towards him and began the count. He was down for the count of one while he hung on the cross. And he proclaimed, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was down for the two count while he lay in the tomb, wrapped in dead man's clothes. But then, as the referee, was starting to count to three. Uh, the, he got up off of the mat. And when he got up off of the mat, he punched the devil and he knocked the enemy out. And because he is in your corner, you can't lose. So just stay in the ring for one more round. When life gives you a blow, just remember I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When the blows come, just say I need one more round. When you're facing things that look impossible, you can say with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. One more round. If I wait on the Lord, he will renew my strength. One more round. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. One more round. See, you've been established. You've been established. You've been established for greater. And the man who is Jesus, he's the one who has empowered. He is the one who has equipped. He is the one who has established. He is the one who is the reason that we're able to attain and achieve greater in his name. Listen, 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 listen. Greater is not about us. 
getting to greater is not about us. Walking in greater is not about us. Being established in greater is not about us, but it's all about bringing him glory. It is all about bringing him honor. It's all about giving him praise. It's all about letting the world know that we serve a risen Savior who was on the mat, but he didn't stay there. He got up one day with all power in his hands, and that same power, that Holy Ghost power, that same power is the power that propels us to greater. You've been established. You've been planted in your family for greater. You've been established. You have been planted in your job for greater. You've been established. You've been planted in whatever church you are part of for greater. And if, if you're not a part of a church, and if you are saved, if you're a part of the body, but if you're not a part of a local church, then I want to invite you. I want to invite you to join us because a child without a family is an orphan. And I don't want you to be orphaned. We want to love on you. We want to walk with you. We want to disciple you. And it doesn't matter where you are. You might be in Germany. You might be in Europe. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in South America. You could be in California or New York, wherever you are. There's a way that we can partner together. And there's a number that's on the screen. And I want to invite you to call that number. Begin this walk with us. If you have not given your life to Christ, I want to invite you this morning to make the best decision that you will ever make, the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Yeah. Your greater is on the other side of your receipt of Jesus Christ as Savior. Once he is in you and you are in him, then what used to be mountains that you could not climb, he'll give you the power to climb. What used to be valleys that you could not come out of, he will empower you by his spirit to come out. And here's the other thing. Listen, here's the other thing. Here's the thing I love about Jesus. One of the many things I love about Jesus. Just as Joseph had to go through, Joseph didn't bypass the pain. But God was with him through the pain. Joseph didn't just, wasn't just lifted from the valley to the mountaintop. Songwriter said, I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. Joseph wasn't simply lifted from the valley to the mountaintop, but, but, but he had to exert some effort. He had to go through some things. But God was with him every step of the way. And so my message to you is God is with you. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, God is with you every step of the way. You don't have to walk this walk alone. I encourage you to cast every care upon him because he cares for you.
my words edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in my sight. Take charge of these thoughts for day and night. Please order my steps in your word. I want, I want to walk worthy, want to walk worthy, my calling to fulfill, please order my steps. As we close out our time together, I thank God for you. I thank God for your joining uh, this morning in worship. My prayer for you as you go forth this week, number one today is that you'll be safe. Be safe in this inclement weather. Be safe and keep yourself safe in this season called COVID. Wear your mask. Uh, social distance, wash your hands frequently, stay safe. That's my first prayer. But my second prayer for you is that you will experience the peace of God, the peace of God this week. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. What peace? that peace that surpasseth all understanding as you keep your hearts and your minds stayed on him. We'll see you next week. God bless you and may the blood of Jesus continually cover and protect you.
His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn.